any particular day, one of these three. Oh, I did it again. I hit the mic. Well, what's happening, boot junkies? Mike Dog Audio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Is that right? Left, right? Yes, left, right. What's going on? It's good to be back. I was out of town for a couple of days, going to see my colleagues at the No Sleep Podcast. I don't know if any of you guys know that. I'm part of a regular podcast, weekly podcast called the No Sleep Podcast, where we tell, tell like campfire stories and so forth and try and scare you. Uh, but I was away for a couple of days, but now I'm back and I was reading my comments on uh, the YouTube comments and somebody asked if I could compare the CAD E100S and the Neumann TLM-103, two mics that I use pretty frequently in my voiceover business. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I've got that video all... And I went through and I looked through all my videos. And yeah, apparently I never actually compared these two microphones. I talk about them and they've been used in other videos, but I've never directly compared these two microphones, which I was surprised. I thought for sure I had done that before, but apparently... I hadn't. So we're going to take this opportunity to rectify that situation and we're going to compare two of my favorite microphones for my particular voice, two microphones that I really enjoy using, and that is the CAD E100S and the Neumann TLM 103, uh, two uh, very commonly used mics in the voiceover business. We're going into my Zoom H5. We have them both set. I'm just making sure that my preamps are set. And both of my preamps are set. So if you're playing along at home, both of my preamps on my Zoom H5 are set at five, uh, right in the middle. That seems to be the sort of the sweet spot for both of these microphones. Nice and hot, not too incredibly hot, uh, but it's a good, it's a good place to good place to be. So let's talk about these two microphones, why you'd use them, when you'd use them, uh, and so forth. I happen to like both of these microphones for my voice these you're looking at pretty much my big three right here uh and given you know any particular day one of these three oh, i did it again i hit the mic one of these three is going to be in uh in my mount here uh i usually start with the uh the 416 or uh, and then i'll try the tlm and then i'll try the e100 uh and Different voice, they, 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 I use them for different things. Uh, this one, I like the, the shotgun because it's out of the way. Uh, I can keep it over, off to the side, point it right at my mouth, and I can see all of my copy right there. Um, and then I'll switch to the TLM if I want. Um, I really like... I think of what the right word would be. Um, I, the, 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 the word I typically use is the muscularity of this microphone. It has a really good... Uh, low end for my voice. I really, I really like the way it, it it captures the resonance of my voice. I really think it has a good, rich, deep low end that I really like the way my voice sounds. The E one hundred E one hundred S tends to be a little bit more neutral than the one hundred three. Uh, they're both pretty warm mics, which means they're not as bright or crisp or have a lot of treble in them. They have plenty of treble, but it's not exaggerated. Many of the uh, common or, or less expensive microphones that are out there, uh, they tend to, uh, I think they tend to exaggerate the top end to give the microphone the appearance of being like super crisp and super clear and super bright. But I often find that it can be exaggerated in such a way that it overdoes it and it can become grating on your ears. Both of these microphones, I think, are really nice and smooth. The E100S tends to be a bit more neutral. It's not, um, it doesn't have the same, again, the word I use is muscularity. Um, it, 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 it captures the low end of my voice really well, but I think it, uh, it's a little bit more neutral across the whole of my voice. Uh, and, but, and so it depends on what I'm reading for. Um, the other thing, and I hope I don't hear it in my, in my headphones, um, the other thing that I, you'll see I don't have in front of me that I would normally have in front of me if I was doing a, a studio recording, uh, a production recording, is I would have a pop filter in front of these. The Neumann in particular is extremely sensitive to plosives. You really need to have good technique, good plosive technique so that you're not popping into the mic uh, because this one 
it'll pop like crazy and it'll probably happen during this during this video because normally I would have a, a pop filter right in front of me to grab that and I think it's doing to, in in part to the basket that's around this microphone is very uh, is very transparent the air can go right through it um, and also the size of the diaphragm diaphragm is larger I think it's about a one inch diaphragm on the Neumann as opposed to I think it's about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit even smaller on the CAD E100S. Uh, and so that doesn't, you know, that's just part of their design. But these, those big diaphragms, they're so delicate and so thin that they can really uh, be sensitive to plosives. Okay, so let's talk about, just so we can get some good, some, some good comparison in between these two. Let's talk about the two different mics themselves. Um, the Neumann is just a straight up cardioid mic. No settings, no switches, no nothing. It's just microphone. Uh, so commonly, some other mics you you will find they'll you can switch different patterns. You can pad them so that they become less sensitive. You know, reduce the voltage that goes to them so that they're not as sensitive. You can use them in a louder scenario. The 103, it's sort of it's an expensive microphone, but in the in the world of Neumann microphones, it's on their lower end. So some of their the more expensive mics will have more features. There'll be a uh, you know omnidirectional figure eight. They'll have all these different patterns, and I think that uh, Neumann has created the TLM one hundred three uh, specifically for things like voiceover. I know people use them on instruments, but it, it, it works really well for voiceover because we really only ever need one setting. It's very rare that we go outside the cardioid pattern. We also, we don't, under normal circumstances, we're not going to get above about you know 105 decibels in anything that we ever record. So things like uh, recording you don't need a pad switch because we're not as loud as drums. We're not as loud as a guitar amplifier or anything like that. So uh, Neumann can strip away some of the features, reduce the cost, while still having the the really excellent capsule, the really expensive part uh, that makes it uh, really good, uh, really good sounding, and really captures the Neumann sound. I mean, there's a there's a certain there's a particular sound that people identify with Neumanns, uh, and this one. It's on the it's on the less expensive side, but it does to me have the have the Neumann sound. Uh, now the E100s is um, does have some of the other features, so it's got knobs and switches and things on it. Uh, two things that it that the E100s has is first it has a a what they call a bass roll off switch, and that uh, can be used if you're in a situation sometimes for vocals singing you might want to roll off some of the bass so that your voice doesn't compete with the uh some of the other instruments there's not a ton of in in singing you probably don't need a all the really low bass it's not like uh in singing you wouldn't use the same frequencies as you would for say like a radio promo where you're getting right up in there and you're you know how the radio guys do it where it's like super low and you're really that voice of god um you would use those bass roll-off switches uh, to either engage it or, or not. I have it set flat right now so that you can hear this mic in its uh, sort of pristine state. Uh, the E100S also has a, a switch on it for a padding. Uh, and pad just means to, uh, to turn down the sensitivity of the mic. It's essentially like a... Um, it's just like a volume switch. So it, it will reduce it by 10, 10 dB, uh, 10 decibels it has to it will just make it less sensitive so you can put it in a louder situation you could use it re to record a super loud instrument um, uh, you know a, a drum a drum kit uh, a bass cabinet you could turn it down or like a in a concert situation where where it's really loud if you were going to try and record a concert with this uh, you could use the the, the switch uh, okay so uh uh, other things to note about these these microphones, uh, there's a, a pretty significant price differential between these two microphones. The Neumann will tend to run, varies by day. Uh, if you include the shock mount, uh, will uh, run about a thousand dollars. I think if you get it without the shock mount, it's like eight ninety nine. The shock mounts Neumann, you know, it's a premier brand, prestige brand, so they charge you a little bit more for everything. Uh, so the shock mount is like over a hundred dollars. There's a foam windscreen that you could put on there that's fifty dollars for a piece of foam. You know, this thing, uh, it's like fifty dollars for that. Crazy, right? So thousand uh, dollars. And now compare that to the E one hundred S. 
uh, which comes with a shock mount, this nice, really uh, low profile, sort of this, they call it like a stealth shock mount. Uh, it's built in, um, and this one will run you, I think $399 is the typical price. I'll, I'll link to both on Amazon so you can see the prices tend to fluctuate. I've seen this high, it goes high as like $422 recently. Uh, but $3.99 is the typical strike price for this. Uh, every once in a while, you'll find it on sale. I, uh, I watch a website called Mass Drop, uh, and every once in a while, they'll do like a group buy, and you can get like 50 maybe 30 or $40 off this mic. I think I got this one off Mass Drop new. I think it was about $350. Uh, so big big price differential. They are different patterns. The uh, Neumann is a cardioid pattern, and I've shoot explain this many times cardioid pattern is is heart shaped pattern and it has a lobe of sensitivity that goes out around this microphone it is very insensitive from the back uh, but it will be very sensitive from the side so as you move your voice off to the side on this microphone uh, it doesn't really drop off you you sort of have the same volume no matter how your voice goes around the microphone which gives you some freedom of movement so if you're if you're an actor who really likes to to emote and move around that mic the sweet spot is a little bit louder. Now, the E100S is a super cardioid microphone, which means it does drop off pretty significantly as you move over to the side. There is a little tiny lobe of sensitivity right behind this microphone, uh, but it's not very sensitive from the side. Uh, so the uh, different situations, this one, the sweet spot of where your voice is going to sound best is a little bit narrower. Not a ton. I mean, the pattern is still pretty big, but as you move off to the side now, something like the shotgun, that's got an extremely narrow uh, lobe of sensitivity, like a, like just straight out inside of the mic. That one drops off very quickly. These two are, are broader. This one is much more forgiving to uh, the area around it, whereas this one is a little bit, does require you to be a little bit more dead on in front of it. You can still move a little bit, uh, but not as much with the other one. They both are relatively hot mics, uh, so you can keep your preamp down pretty low uh, and get good signal out of it. You don't have to crank the gain all the way up on your, uh, on your preamps uh, to do it, which means you can reduce some of the inherent noise. So if your preamp is noisy, you can reduce some of that noise and still get good signal from both of these mics. They're both reasonably hot mics, so they send a lot of signal down. They both do require phantom power typical of a condenser mic. They claim to have very low self-noise. Interestingly, this one says uh, self-noise is how loud the microphone is when there's no signal. How much just inherent noise does the microphone make? They have different ones. And I think this one claims to be quieter. This one has like a 3.7 dB self noise and this one claims like a 7 db self noise both of which are extremely quiet but i think this microphone is noisier than this microphone what you'd expect for the uh for the price differential however this one claims to be quieter than this one the e100 claims to be quieter than the neumann but my experience is it doesn't it doesn't bear out uh pardon me uh, so what I'll do is I'll be quiet, I'll hold my breath, and we'll do each one of those. And what I'll do is I'll, I did this in another video, is I'll actually boost it up so that you can actually hear it, but I'll boost them both up by the exact same amount so you'll be able to hear the inherent pre preamp noise, uh, not the preamp noise because it's using the same preamp, but the inherent noise of the microphone. So first we'll do the TLM-103. So here we go. Okay, and now we'll do the E100S's self noise. Now, even in my headphones, as I listen to it, as I record this, I can hear this microphone and I can't really hear this microphone. This one tends to be quieter. I think my, my E100S is defective because it should be quieter than this one. But I've sent it back to a cat and they, they said it wasn't. 
So we're going to assume that that's the way that's supposed to sound, that inherent hiss inside this microphone. It's there. Now, when you're recording and you're right up on this mic and you're giving it, you're, you're giving it the beans with your, with your voice, you should really never have to concern yourself with that hiss. It's really just in the silent parts when it is perfectly quiet that you do get that self-noise and you have to manage it, usually with a noise gate or something like that or, you know, a dialogue denoiser. Uh, or, you know, some plugin that will help you with that. But, you know, at $400, you don't want to have to use a plugin to manage the noise of the microphone. So take that for what it is. Uh, and you have to decide if that's worth it. Personally, for me, I like the way my voice sounds enough that I'm willing to do a little extra work, that tiny little, little extra bit of work to uh, make my voice to, to carry the way my voice sounds. So like in another video, I compared it to the Rode NT1A, uh, which is, you know, similar in price point to this, a little bit less expensive. It's a quieter mic. Certainly, I don't have to manage the inherent noise of that microphone because it's quieter than this one we tested. Uh, but I don't like the way my voice sounds on it. So I use that one way. Well, I would use it way less than I would use this one, even though this one has a little tiny bit of noise. It's just the choice, the choice you make. Um, so switch back and forth. You've now heard both of these microphones. Um, I'll do one more thing. I'll just, I'll get right up to the microphone so that you can really hear the proximity effect. So first we'll start with the proximity and effect of the E100. And you can really hear as you get right up on it, hopefully I'm not popping it. As you get right up on it, you can hear um, how the proximity effect is on it. And now I'll go over to the e, uh, to the TLM 103 so that you can hear me get right up on it. Now I'm really trying not to pop this this microphone because I should have a pop filter in front of it, uh, but hopefully you can hear how it sounds. Sorry if there's any plosives, I, it would block totally block my view if you uh, if we didn't. Uh, so anyway, those are the two microphones, both really excellent microphones. I highly recommend both of these microphones for voiceover. Why would you choose one over the other? One, you'd choose the Neumann if you like the way it sounds, because Neumann is all about the sound. It's going to sound great, uh, but it's extraordinarily sensitive, right? They're both very sensitive microphones, and the cardioid pattern is even more sensitive than the super cardioid. So that means your studio has to be better to support this microphone. Just a fact of life. This one you can get away, the E100S, you can get away with a slightly worse sounding studio if it's worse sounding because of outside noise, car traffic, fan noise from your computer, some, you know, stream or something that's, you can, you can arrange this microphone in such a way that the, it's less sensitive to noise from the side, uh, which means can be ever so slightly more forgiving than this one. That noise, as long as it's off to the side of the microphone, will be quieter than this one, strictly due to the pattern. Nothing magical about the mic, it's just that the, the super cardioid has a narrower sensitivity than the other one. So there you have it. The two microphones that I, I really like, uh, to the two condenser, large diaphragm condensers that I really, really like. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Now, go pick a mic, any mic, Neumann, CAD, any mic, go record something amazing. We'll talk to you next time.